been here 25 years and it's, it's quite tough. It's a tough environment now, but there's also some exciting opportunities and challenges ahead. I think for us, it, we're in a, a wealthy, aff, affluent area, but we have a lot of hidden poverty. We don't hit government targets in terms of deprivation, so we don't attract a lot of um, government funding into the area. The public sector fi uh, funding of voluntary sector groups has shrunk over a period of years. Also, they've gone uh, away from grant income to commissioning income, so you have to commission and actually tender uh, to deliver a service. Sometimes you win it, sometimes you don't. Um, and that's been quite a hard process for a lot of voluntary groups because it was such a challenge. We are here to serve the people of this community um, and that's not being any kind of angel, that's just what we join here for. Nobody comes into this sort of organisation for the money. You come in because you feel that there's something that you can give back. There are bigger rewards than financial ones working in here. In here is where we take all the transport requests, plan all the transport and allocate all the transport. That's both for the die of the ride and for the hospital car scheme. We do a normal uh, Friday morning run where we have uh, customers that we deliver, pick up and deliver to Waitrose, Tesco's, Marks and Spencer's and the town centre. Then later on in the day we'll come around and pick them up again and take them back to their residence. Yeah. I'm a paid member, yeah, yeah. And we have many that are volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. It's good fun. You meet many interesting people, people who've done lots of interesting things in their in their lives, yeah. Nice to see you give them a helping hand. Yeah, make their life easier. We provide a door-to-door -door service, which many of them are, are very thankful for, and wouldn't be able to uh, get out and get their shopping or whatever, or the hospital appointments, without this service, without paying a lot of money for a taxi. And for many of them, it's probably the only time they come out in a week, and it gives them a smiling face, a bit of interaction. It's good for them. This is where we run the day centre um, for the frail elderly and disabled and people who have uh, some mild forms of dementia. And four years ago we had 80% grant funding and just 20% of um, services that were purchased. Over that four, four year period we have now shifted it that we now have 55% um, earned income and just a balance of the uh, grant funding. So we're actually being um, judged and evaluated on what, on what the service we actually provide without having to fill out all these rotten monitoring forms uh, that are attached with grants. So it then frees up our time to actually be able to go out and look for new opportunities and new ways of delivering. The CTA, they actually did um, a big feature article of us uh, during the floods because we rescued the ambulance service getting all their dialysis patients to and from um, West Midland hospitals. Yeah, it, it was good. and We received the inaugural CTA award for the best rural community transport operator in that year uh, and although Jane and I went up to receive it the, it was very much on behalf of the volunteers. Well, I spent 33 years in the Air Force before then uh, I retired then I did some security work and made redundant and retired and now I'm still not retired <laughs> getting there. Well it makes all the difference they can't collect us leave us there bring us back and help us up to the, uh, my flat with the luggage. So I couldn't ask for anything more. I, I normally drive, but I am in drones, I haven't been well. So um, this is the next best thing. It's good service, I think, and they take the shopping into your kitchen. I just keep on using it as hard as I can. We recognised a few years ago that um, the legislation was changing. We can run under Section 19 of the Transport Act and Section 22 of the Transport Act. We're not allowed to make profit. 
so you just have what they call full cost recovery. However, in order to support all the ongoing um, design and um, technological um, supports that we need these days and looking at new ways of delivering transport, we need to make a profit. Uh, and we are looking now to tender competitively with statutory bodies, with the ambulance service, with Gloucestershire County Council, um, special educational needs, schools, contracts, health contracts, anything that we can do using um, our skills to bring income in to support our core work. Uh, and it's, it's really important to us and to everybody in here that we can maintain the core business that we've got, which is looking after our community. And Dial the Ride, for example, can never wash its face financially. If you can't expect elderly, low income people to be paying what is a full cost recovery price for a vehicle. They need to get shopping and they need to go home again and we do a door to door service. Now that is always going to run at a loss. And un unless we can find other stuff to bring in and subsidise that, that will suffer. We also run uh, charity shops um, as a way of um, increasing the income because we like free reserves in this organisation because then we are in control of what we want to spend the money on and the trustees love that. <laughs> Morning ladies. We tend to sell bric-a-brac, we uh, sell clothing, we sell um, children's uh, clothing as well as um, toys and we have a, an extensive book department which is round the corner. The one thing which costs a lot of money are minibuses and minibuses that have to be adapted for disability and each minibus costs us around £40,000 each. So to raise that through fundraising events is quite hard, whereas through the shop it regularly supports the dial ride and we'll probably buy our first bus this year uh, through the proceeds of the shop, which is just fantastic. The trustees looked at how they were going to do, um, manage this business in the future. Uh, so we looked at six different types of um, community interest development uh, social enterprise models and decided um, through um, various um, government funding to go down through the social enterprise route. So setting up a trading company that was a subsidiary of the charity and be able to gift aid back into the charity so that the trustees could develop what they knew they wanted and the community wanted in, in the local area. We have split our trustee board into two. So there's a, a small group that look at the, so, the social enterprise, the business end, um, but they are subcontracted, if you like, to, to do that from the main charity board. And the two meet through a common chair and vice chair so that the one doesn't go off in a direction that the main charity um, doesn't like. I think what we as community transport providers have to be really, really careful of is that we don't lose sight of what our core business is. There will always be a need for community transport providers to provide for the elderly, the disabled, people that are socially isolated. There will always be a need for that. Um, but I think the government will dictate that in order to support that, we're not going to give you grants. You must go and find out money from elsewhere to support it. Uh, and so more and more people will end up doing social enterprise or, or kicks, community interest companies, something like that, in order that they can raise money to support their community endeavours. We have got to get up off our backsides and say, we are going to make this happen. Um, which is why I think kicks social enterprises are the ways for charity to go. We just have a lovely, lovely time doing it all. <laughs> so we are very, very fortunate. <laughs>